Hi, Willie Hodgson here with San Jose BMW. We're here with the BMW Motorrad 2023 K1600 GT. We are going to uh, go over the controls, some of the features, and most importantly, the 10.5 TFT dash. We're gonna put chapter markers in here, so if you wanna skip ahead, feel free to do so. But most importantly, if you have any questions, any confusion in what we're presenting, please reach out, call us. We don't care where you're from. We wanna help you. All right, let's get in. So you notice this one's got a keyless ride. Once you turn it on, it turns on all the lights, give you a kind of pre-ride check, make sure everything's functioning properly. First thing you'll notice is these two lights flashing here. They're saying that the systems are with this four hertz flash, that they're ready to be armed, but the last thing in order to actually arm them, it wants to see the wheels turn. So we'll ignore those for now, but if you roll off, once you accomplish four miles an hour, those lights will turn off. So on the right handlebar grip here, the top button, we have the central locking. This is awesome because with the keyless ride and, and a button like this, you truly don't need your key. Uh, we could also reference the gas cap, same thing, keyless ride, it's got a little micro switch under there. It won't allow us to open it while the bike is on though. Central locking button, one push of the button will lock all the compartments on the bike, including the bags, uh, and then throw an icon on the dash to let you know everything is locked. This feature can also be overridden. So if you take the manual key, you put it in the saddlebag, and you uh, turn it to the lock setting, it will be locked no matter what. So whether you're either unlocking or locking, the bag will remain locked. All right, next button under that is the, the mode button. So when we press the mode button, the first thing it does is bring up the available modes. So we can see that there's three modes here. Rain mode is designed for wet weather riding. This has a nice soft throttle um, and detuned horsepower to allow you to maintain traction in a low traction situation. It also retunes the ABS and traction control for wet weather. It also will readjust the suspension uh, for a baseline of a less dampening or a softer suspension setting to allow the tire to follow the ground a little bit better. One button push brings up the mode, the second one changes it. So the next mode we come to is the road mode. As you imagine, it retunes the ABS and traction trail for dry weather road riding. It also sets the suspension into a still soft dampening mode referred to as road. So the road suspension setting and the rain are both the same. Now, uh, two button pushes on the uh, riding modes. Again, it'll jump to dynamic. Dynamic's the sport mode for this bike. So the throttle is gonna be nice and crisp. Um, uh, and then the ABS and traction control are now retuned for more of a sport ride. Now the, the suspension is now set to the dynamic mode, which is a more sporty suspension setting a little bit more dampening for sport riding. Alrighty, right below that we have the stop start button. If you push the button up, that's your emergency kill button. I do like to just use the power button to shut the bike off. With the keyless ride, you have to be at a, a dead stop in order to shut it off. Even one mile an hour while pushing it, you wouldn't be able to shut the bike off. This is a safety feature. Moving over to the left handlebar switch here. The first thing you notice on the top here is an R. The R is for uh, reverse. If we were in a state that we could accept the reverse, we tap the button. The flashing is indicating that it wants to change into reverse and it goes right back to neutral. Why? Because we got the side stand down and we are not running. <clears throat> However, if we were running and we tap the reverse button, it would put the R on solid, letting you know it's in reverse. And then by depressing the starter button, the bike will be activated by the starter gear and it will walk itself backwards. But don't worry, it keeps it at a walkable speed, real easy to walk the bike backwards. Super handy feature on a big bike like this. Right below the R, we have the driving light button. So when we push that button, no light came on the dash at the current moment because um, when the bike's not running, it's not gonna wanna put the running lights on. However, the bike does have memory. So if the last riding situation had the driving lights on, when you turn the bike on, it will give you an indicator letting you know that the driving lights are on. Also known as fog lights, but they're a separate light, lower set on the bike. On the top of the left handlebar switch, we have the cruise control. So to activate the cruise control, we just move it to the right. If you tap the cruise control button forward, it's now gonna hold your speed. A double tap will increase it by five miles an hour. A hold backwards will coast until you let go, and then it'll pick back up at whatever speed you let go at. Um, if you shut the cruise control off like this and you're at 0% throttle, as you imagine, the bike's gonna engine brake really heavy as if you had 0% throttle. So what I like to do is I typically accelerate past the uh, held cruise control speed and then shut the cruise control button off. This allows for a very seamless transition from cruise control to regular gas. Right below the cruise control, we have the hazard button. In order to activate it, the bike does need to be on. You turn the hazard button on just like you expect. Both indicators come on on the dash. If you were to have to leave your bike, you could shut it off. The hazard will remain on. And then the only way to turn the hazards off is turn the bike back on, press the hazard button, and then you can deactivate the hazards. Uh, button under that is the adjustable windscreen. 
Below that, we have the turn signal button. So right turn, activates the right turn signal, left as you imagine, and straight in shuts it off. Below that, we have the horn. It is nice and loud. I'll uh, spare you the, the noise at the current moment. Again, if you want it louder, we do that here at San Jose BMW. So please reach out. We got all kinds of awesome ways to make that louder. In front, we have the high beam indicator. So a pull will be a flash to pass and you can see it's got an indicator and a push forward remains on, again, with an indicator to give you an idea that the high beam is on. So now onto the magic. The magic happens with this menu button. So a tab up on the menu button will change this upper rider information display. So if we tab it a couple times here, we can see there's a wealth of information up here. I like to kind of set this up as a, a quick reference for things like tire pressure, range. So I tend to reduce that and I can show you how to do that here in a second when we get into the menu. You can kind of configure it for whatever you'd like. So a tab down on the menu now allows us to get into how we change the functionality. What are we looking to do? Do we want to turn the radio on, do some navigation, or uh, for example, the first one's my vehicle. So if we tab down again into my vehicle, my vehicle is a general overview of the bike. So you'll notice we have one message here. Um, and I'll show you there's multiple pages what that message is in a second. You can see the coolant temperature is 67 degrees. Clearly this bike hasn't been started yet. We also have a service reminder that's on. Range is 192 miles till empty. That range is based on the last quarter mile of riding. We don't see tire pressure until the um, wheels start to move. The centrifugal force activates the sensors and that will then display the tire pressure. Take this, what we reference as the wonder wheel, rock it over one screen. We now have trip computer one. As you see, it's got a ton of information. That was also stuff that we saw up here on the upper rider information display. Um, so if we were to eliminate it from the upper rider information display, we didn't get rid of it completely. It's still here in trip computer. Next screen over is trip computer two. And what I like about Trip Computer 2, if we hit the menu button down one more time, you got this automatic reset. So if you're anything like me, you start the day on a ride, you're having a great time. And so with the automatic reset, it's gonna automatically reset it. So if you forget to reset it, just before you hit the starter button the next time, you can gather that data and have a good idea for, for what you did for the day. We rock it over one more time. This is the tire pressure screen. So this, what, what's so awesome here is it gives you the spec. So you can see it's 42. And again, once the tires move, it'll actually give you the pressures here um, at the current moment in the standstill that it has not activated the sensors yet. So if we rock it over one more screen. This is our, our service screen. It's letting you know that either in one year or in 618 miles, you need to get it serviced. This is one service, but as many motorcycles riders do have multiple bikes, sometimes you don't accomplish the, the mileage in a year for the service interval. So BMW wants you to take your bike in. So we currently see 618 miles, and this is a brand new bike. So that's the break-in service. So if we rock it over one more screen, this is our service message. And all it's telling us is, hey, it's time to bring it into a workshop. So anytime you drop below a thousand miles, it's gonna start telling you it's time for a service. Alrighty, I'm gonna put it back in the main or the home or the first screen, let's say, because um, it will remember where we left it and it'll go back to that screen when we re-enter it. So the next option over is radio. So if we wanna select the radio, we would just tab it down, just select it to turn it on. So it's saying to rock it over to turn it on. Yeah, this will turn the radio on as you. So from this screen, once you've turned it on, a quick tap on the menu up will bring us to the screen. Now we can use the wonder wheel to turn the volume down or even mute it in this particular case. If we rock it over, we'll change the station. So if we tap down again, we can change the source. For, so radio, if we rock it over here, we have AFM, or AM, FM, and then Sirius satellite. All the new BMWs that come with a radio like this come with one year of Sirius XM radio uh, free of charge. So if we rock it backwards here, um, we can add, add as favorite. Um, so this is where you'd go in there and set different presets for your favorites. FM stations, FM options, audio settings. Audio settings is, is uh, nice because you can come in here and adjust different things. So if you had a helmet speaker system and you didn't want to have the external speakers on, you could rock it over and then you could just turn it to helmet. It's going to now turn off the speakers. Um, it's not allowing me to do that because it doesn't have a helmet paired at the current moment. So the only option is the external speakers. Now on the sound profile, like we see it's currently set on bass booster. I wouldn't recommend the, the bass booster because what you'll find is with all the wind noise and all the road noise that you get on motorcycles, it really distorts the sound. So I, I tend to like things like um, treble boost or even um, uh, voice, something like that to um, make it a little bit clearer. 
Under equalizer here, you can make some adjustments. I typically would, would run my treble a little bit higher, like plus three, and then I actually go to the bass and I reduce it by three. The less bass you have, the more clear audio, and the better you'll be able to hear it. Um, volume control is really cool. So this is a speed sensitive control, so it's currently set on zero. As you slow down, it's gonna ramp down more. So this is really nice when you pull up to a light and you're not just blasting the music, not trying to grab for the volume control. You can just focus on slowing down and grabbing the clutch. So speed sensitive volume, really awesome feature. Alrighty, so we get, uh, we'll go back up here. We'll shut the radio off for now so we can continue. One more tab up on the menu gets us back to the main screen. So we see the uh, navigation here is grayed out. Uh, that's because we don't have a phone paired to it yet, so we'll go over that here in a second when we get to the settings. Same thing for media, uh, no phone paired, so no media available, and then telephone, and just a simple rock of the Wonder Wheel one way or the other will either accept or deny the call. Uh, really easy. You do need a helmet headset for that feature because it needs a microphone in order for you to, to communicate with someone. These other two features should come live once we pair the phone. So we get over to settings here. In the settings screen, I mean, the first thing you see is assist. So if we rock the little wheel over, we have dampening. So we can see that we're in the riding mode dynamic and we can see the suspensions in dynamic. I just might go in here, you know, and, and go in and change the suspension. So I can make the suspension have less dampening, a little bit more Cadillac touring kind of feel for the coast uh, ride. And then when I get to the mountains and I want a little bit more control, a little bit more dampening, it can go back to dynamic. Now load here is grayed out because what it needs is the bike to be started. So once we were to start the bike, this would now become active and we could adjust it. The reason being, it takes a lot of um, electrical power to compress the spring. So what it's set on right now is auto and that's really cool because it's basically using the, the load sensors. So it has a, one in the rear and one in the front and it, it's able to report to the ECU what the, the attitude of the chassis is. So it's able to pick up on, on you adding bags or bags and a passenger for a weekend and it'll automatically put a little bit of spring uh, preload in there which helps support the load a little bit better and then the next feature down here is the DTC so that's the dynamic traction control and we can shut it off here there's not many reasons I'd really recommend shutting it off with the ability to change riding modes we can change how that system functions but a good example is maybe you're going camping and there's a little fire road you're gonna head down Again, if there's any kind of rear wheel slipping to get back on the road or something, the bike could be fighting you. So you can just go in there and turn it off. And as you would imagine, if we were to shut the bike off and turn it back on, the, the dynamic traction control would uh, resort back to the safest setting, which would be the on setting. So we'll rock it over to turn it back on. Hill Start Control Pro. What makes this pro is that we can change how this is activated. So a quick pull of the front brake and a release will turn on the hill start control. You can see it's crossed out right now because the bike is not running, we're in the showroom here. But if the bike were out there running and you're on a hill, you could give a nice little squeeze. It's gonna activate the hill start control and then you can just focus on using the clutch and using the gas and not having to use that. How it works is it puts a little bit of rear brake on. As you imagine with the rear brake on, you do have to give it a little bit more gas uh, so I really like it in the manual setting. That way I know when it's set. So that's it for the uh, assist setting. Now in heat, uh, heating here, we have uh, heated handlebar grips and we have heated seat. And as you imagine, when you want to select one, you just rock it over and it's got a one through five. You set it there. If you once you want to set it, you just rock it one more time. The dot indicates it's now on and it will present a little logo that looks like a seat and it shows you that you're in the setting number two. That way when you're going down the road and it feels like your butt's cooking, you got a quick reference to see that yes, indeed the heated seat is on. So we'll turn it back off, exit that setting. So those are both in the heated settings. Under vehicle settings here, we have alarm system. So the alarm system, we can change how it, how it works. So obviously the alarm warning is in on, set on louder right now. Arming tone, essentially when you were to hit the button on the fob, it will give you uh, a, a tone. And if you're maybe coming home late at night or you got neighbors that are extra sensitive to noise, you can uh, leave it in the off position like it is now and you could arm the bike and arm the alarm without actually causing a beep. One more rock down is the auto arm functionality. I'm not a big fan of this. You know, you pull up to the gas station you shut the bike off. You know, maybe you're in the bag, maybe you wanted to grab a drink or something, and then you come back out and stand the bike up and, and now the alarm's going off. So I like to know when the alarm's armed, but some people like it to automatically set. Obviously just quick little um, setting there, you can set it. And then lights here. 
This is the got the comfort turn indicators and all that means is it will auto shut the turn indicator off. So if we just rock it to the right here, now the uh, auto shut off on the turn signals are set. Um, but you know, if you're riding in a group ride or some other reason you want the turn signal to stay on all the time, you can go ahead and shut that off. But I really like that feature, I always forget. One more down here is system settings. These are all things like date and time, units, language, favorites button. So the favorites button is really cool. This is referring to these four buttons down this side panel over here. What that allows you to do is actually set those buttons to be presets um, and quick quick jumps too. So if you know if it's the in between season, springtime, fall, and you want you know your heated grips, easy access, you don't want to be spending a bunch of time thumbing through the menu. You could just easily go in there and set button one up as your heated grips, and you got a ton of different options in there that you can um, set it up for. All right, so getting out of there, we have connections. So getting into connections, this is where we're gonna pair our mobile phone. So the first thing we see, we got mobile phone, we got headsets. We can pair both of them through this screen. BMW uses an app called BMW Motorrad Connected. And this is what the app kind of looks like here. You can see I actually currently have a S1000RR in here. Got quite a few bikes in the garage. So if we tap the three buttons here, we can go right to my garage. We'll hit the plus in the top corner. From this screen here, we're gonna to wanna to jump over to our uh, uh, settings in our phone. We'll go to Bluetooth, scroll down to the bottom here, make sure we uh, can read it. So we'll select rock over on the little wonder wheel. We'll pair a new mo mobile device by rocking it over one more time. Give it a second here to pick up. There's my phone, we'll hit pair. We'll rock it over to confirm. Now it's gonna ask me, do I wanna allow it to access my contacts? I'm gonna say yes. Why that's so handy is when someone calls me, their name will come up right here on the screen, makes it really easy to understand. Exit this screen here. We'll go back to the home screen of the app. So now we can see a picture of the bike. In the app here, we got all kinds of great information. If you want to now, so we let's exit this setting screen real quick. If we rock it back over, we now see that media is selectable. Why? Because we have a media source that can uh, broadcast music to the bike. Um, so in this particular case, if you're going to play music on the bike, you could just go right to SoundCloud or um, Spotify or whatever your preferred music source is, and you can play music right here to the bike. We would just select down, and it's now going to allow us to, to play the music. All right, moving over one more is navigation. So we now can use navigation because we have the phone paired up. If we go into navigation, the one heads up I'm gonna give you is the navigation does have to be done in the app. So although we can play different music sources like SoundCloud and Spotify and things outside of this app, if we're going to um, get directions, it has to be done in the Motorrad Connected app. This helps for the most seamless experience. If you want to select some directions, you just come to the upper search here. We could come in and we could say, we want the fastest route, the shortest, most efficient. Maybe you want the winding, and then you can actually adjust how, much, how windy you want it to be. Once we're set to go, all we have to do is go to go. Now it's gonna pop up on the screen here. We can put our phone away. BMW designed this awesome little compartment. They got a button right here to the side. Uh, this compartment allows you to put your phone in here. There is a spot where you can plug it in to charge it. Uh, and it does keep your phone. There's a little uh, fan in there, keep your phone cool. When you shut your bike off, the screen will lower and uh, keep the dash uh, or keep that compartment closed to prevent anyone from getting in there and, and taking your phone. One thing really cool is you don't need to be in this full navigation screen to use it. You could just press and hold up. So you could be in your home screen and it's gonna do guidance up here in the upper corner and pop up as, as the prompts are needed. And you can very quickly ignore it, cancel it, repeat the command, all the kind of stuff you would be familiar with. Once we paired the phone, it now is giving me a little phone logo, letting me know that the bike and the phone are communicating properly and that my phone has reception and how much battery's left. The other thing when we paired our phone is it now has a speed uh, in the upper corner. So this is giving you the speed limit or the current road you're on. If you exceed the speed limit on the road, it turns red to let you know you're winning. You could do all kinds of ride recording. You can see here we had some ABS activations. So it sounds like I was doing a really fun ride here. So if I were to go over to the next little button here, there's a bunch of analytics about the ride. So as I drag this along, it shows me on my ride what was taking place and it gives me all kinds of fun little different info. We hope you found this video helpful. Uh, most importantly, everyone here at San Jose BMW is an expert on the BMW models, not just the S1000. So please feel free to reach out. We'll put links in the description. And uh, as BMW would say, make life a ride.